Good day, fellow investors. Today we're going to discuss stocks. More specifically, stocks to buy based on buybacks. This is a very interesting phenomenon, and I want to discuss that by discussing Cisco, Dropbox, Axon Noble, and then also some examples from the past, like RH Restoration Hardware, that did extremely well on the same basis. We'll also discuss Buffett's activity during the last quarter. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't. Now, let's start immediately with Cisco just reported earnings. We did an analysis about seven, eight months ago. I even bought it for my large portfolio. So let me show you what's going on there. If you want to read the full analysis, just go on my stock market research platform page, check it out before the stock price goes up next week and if you go to the curriculum you can see here there is, is a lot also for free so here are my sector analysis here are my covered stocks traded that i really update on earnings and everything and you can see how i do that on cisco especially as it is a covered stock so if you click on preview here you have the last cisco earnings update so uh, that i did i think yesterday so i have to correct this but okay the previous earnings update and then you have the full stock Cisco stock analysis that I bought. This is November when it was $42.7. So now it's a little bit higher, but the thesis was that the market cap, the price earnings ratio, the dividend yield were all relatively low for what Cisco will be doing and was doing and is doing. And then every time when the stock was depressed like that, it was a good buy. Then you have an analysis discussion of the company and below you have a risk reward situation for the company let me just get to it so buybacks dividend raise revenue growth can push the stock price to 60 so we are already above 50 so still a little bit to go to 60 and if we go up to the current earnings update i have it here in the presentation results were really really good revenue growth they are back to revenue growth they have improving numbers improving margins and especially good great cash flows that they have used to pay back debt but they have little debt so at some point they'll either increase the dividend or increase the buybacks what happens when they do that or if they do both the stock goes higher so subscriptions also has been looked at as an old business but the more and more it sells subscriptions the more it will be looked as a new business which means relatively higher valuation needed capital allocation they have done 500 million of share repurchases paid dividends for 1.5 billion total 2 billion but if i look at what their cash flow movements were, were they paid 5.5 billion for acquisitions and 3 billion for repayments of long-term debt so in one quarter they created 3.5 billion of cash just cash as value that times four is around 14 billion which gives us a cash flow yield of six seven percent compared to the current market capitalization which is not amazing but it's still relatively very very good and if i look at the balance sheet if i look at long-term debt it went down 2 billion but it's just 9.5 billion so if we go back to the video about the inelastic market hypothesis discussed by professors Gabaix and Cohen from Harvard then you see that if there is more cash flows going into a stock especially through buybacks we'll see later in Buffett's example also about Apple especially through buybacks then 1 billion going into a stock usually on average increases the market capitalization by 5 billion if cisco decides to increase the buybacks as there is no more debt to be repaid and they start to doing 10 billion on buybacks that will increase the market cap by 50 billion at least so there is still 20 30 percent upside for cisco just on buybacks on good numbers and on good economic activity now as we recover from covid so very interesting proposition i am long of course since november but i looked at this wanted to share because i did this publicly there is always the preview and see okay now we still have a positive risk reward situation 
on a relative basis on an absolute return we are at six seven percent given the cash flows if we go to my stock analysis table this is the publicly analyzed table you can check it all for free of course on my research platform there is also a link in the description of this video so if you go to the comparative list of publicly analyzed stock you can download this template for free or you can check my premium stock the core portfolios and everything that i have here on a similar template a little bit more elaboration there but if we go here we have cisco the valuation and I have used the dividends here. Given the good numbers, 6% growth rate, 6% dividend rate, if for a 10% return, Cisco was fairly valued at 35. However, if they push buybacks higher, then the dividend per share should grow faster. So we could be at 8%, 3% required return from the market and from a dividend yield. And the value is still for a 10% return so well as I said for a 7% return then Cisco is their fairly valued so relatively to the market 7% is still good return and therefore the stock might go even higher you can play around with this table and see for yourself also check other stocks if you are interested this is getting bigger and bigger and this is just my public work since February. But relatively speaking, we are still looking really, really good for Cisco. So Cisco, we bought somewhere in November, I think later end November here. So after the already good numbers here. And since then, the stock just went up on good numbers, but still we haven't seen the impact on buybacks. So if there are buybacks increases, increases dividends, I think this can easily go to 60. Same principle, even more emphasized is Dropbox that we recently did when we discussed Jeremy's. All the videos that I mentioned will be in the link in the description below so you can check that. Check also my platform because the price is going up on Tuesday so I need to limit the number of members so check that before it happens. And there we discussed Dropbox and how they are issuing convertible notes, a, mil a billion I think, to do buybacks and if we look at the number of shares issued you can see they were increasing the number increasing increasing and then from somewhere november dropbox started to decrease the number of shares outstanding strongly through buybacks and if we look at the stock price what happened since november it went up 50 percent so the market cap went from 7 billion to the current 11 billion as they started doing buybacks. If they issue another bond, another convertible bond, then a restoration hardware scenario is possible and it means that the stock can easily double just based on their buybacks due to the market inelasticity hypothesis that it seems really works in these markets. Similarly, I have researched just ExxonMobil, which is a Dutch company. I'm looking at all the companies on the Dutch stock market. And if you go to my blog, you can find the latest Dutch analysis. I'm going stock by stock. Here is also AXO. And you can see the analysis. So stock price going up thanks to buybacks. Of course, it's a cyclical and everything. You can read the analysis, but the market cap is around 20 billion euro. And they said they will spend a billion euro on buybacks. If they spend a billion euro on buybacks, given the market cap of 20 billion, a billion times five, it's five billion. The market cap will likely be 25 billion at the end of the year. Maybe even the stock is a little bit more inelastic as it is European, maybe it will go to 30. And you can see that since the announcement and the activity, the stock is already up 17, 18%. And if they keep doing buybacks and everything, then this will go higher and higher. This is the buyback impact on stocks. Of course, there are also risks. If you do buybacks and your business is stably growing, growing and constantly protecting, having that value, that is good. Perfect example is Apple. Since 2016, Apple really, really started pushing it on doing buybacks, more and more buybacks, really deploying all the cash flows into buybacks. And the stock is up 425%. Valuations changed, everything changed for Apple. So if 
a company is good and earnings remain strong, then buybacks are really good. However, if the business falters, if there are some issues with the business, then if you made a billion of buybacks at high stock price, then the stock price drops lower, then you burned a billion. And that's terrible. And then the buybacks emphasize the negativity, you lost a billion and the stock goes even lower and lower. So that's the risk reward one has to keep in mind. So before we go to Buffett, a Buffett stock that I analyzed a year ago was Restoration Hardware. And I said that this stock has to go up because they are issuing convertible bonds and using that money to do buybacks to push the stock price higher and higher. Here is the result. I think I made my analysis somewhere in April and you can see the explosion with the stock. Just looked a little bit for their convertible notes and they just keep on issuing convertible no notes, zero interest rate, convertible at a higher price and buying back shares like there is no tomorrow. So this restoration hardware is the financial engineering potential. But always keep in mind that this backfires if there are issues with the business. So always watch how the business is doing before going in on buying something as the stock will go up on inelastic market hypothesis and buybacks. So as promised, let's dig into Buffett's action. We did last quarter some videos on Buffett's buying pharma stocks and Verizon. So let's see what's going on there. Buffett kept Apple stable. So he really likes the business, the buybacks, the activity there. So nothing wrong with that. It's his biggest position and best returns. However, if we look on pharma stocks, ABV Merckx has been lowered by almost 40% of the position and Bristol Myers also a little bit. Now, these are $2 billion positions. So I'm not sure, I'm not 100% sure it's Buffett buying that. Can be also Todd and Ted that have now, I think more than 20 billion under management. So they could be buying these and then keeping things volatile, buying and selling as we see with Chevron where they sold 50% of the position as the stock price goes up. Tomorrow, deep dive into oil. I have looked at some presentations. I want to look at the environment and tell you what is the risk reward. So subscribe for that and see you tomorrow if you're interested in oil. So also these pharma stocks could be not Buffett activity. This is definitely Buffett's activity. So he got fed up with Wells Fargo. That's also a message. We'll hear more about it next conference call next year, Buffett style. And here you see they still own restoration hardware. The stock just goes up, up and up and that's it. So they also like this notes convertible financial engineering but we still don't know whether it is Buffett or not. So a lot of stocks, stocks that will go up on these kinds of financial engineering, see how it fits your portfolio. I am always looking at this story, okay how it develops but also I'm always looking for a safety in the quality of the business. If I can find both then I have found something great to put my money in. Check my research platform. Here is the review because the price is going up and I'll see you tomorrow discussing oil.